Thanks for coming, Doctor. It isn't an easy trip. I need your help. We came as soon as we got your cable, Professor Gould. You said you wanted Astro. I need a favor. I hate to ask, but a dying man should get a last request. No, don't talk like that. Professor, I wanted to tell you how much I enjoyed your last paper. After that trouble with the icebergs, it made very interesting reading. Now, you said that outer space effects on icebergs... No time. Listen, it's about my ancestry. I'm descended from the Vikings. The Vikings? I guess Astro hasn't heard about them in school yet. The Vikings were great sailors. They went out from their Scandinavian homelands to conquer settlements in Europe. They were powerful, fierce warriors. Almost a thousand years ago, King Eric of the Vikings came to Greenland and began to worship their god Odin. He made sacrifices to Odin and buried gold with sacred statues. Gold, you say? During World War II, the Nazis tried everything to find the gold, but they never came up with a single ounce. I'm not interested in the gold. What good would it do me now? I only want to find the sacred Viking burial ground. Will you help? Uh, tomorrow? Some friends are coming. I've told them about you. They're counting on your help. Uh, I won't be with you, but I'll rest better knowing you'll be helping us. Astro, we need your powers to get through the ice and snow. You're my hope of finding the tomb of Odin. <gasps> Professor Gould! Here comes a strange-looking ship. I can't believe it. That's a Viking ship. What? Lower the sail. Rest the oars. Ship stopped. Tie it up. I didn't expect the professor's friends to be dressed up like Vikings. Huh? What's wrong? Oh. You two must be Dr. Elephant and Astro. Uh, that's right. My name is Cloud. I'm captain of this ship. Professor Ghoul told us about you and your bravery. Pleased to meet you. Ah, oh, that's a magnificent ship you have there. Men, on to the sacred land of Odin. I didn't expect this. I thought Vikings used sails. Sometimes we use the sails, but you can't depend on the weather in the North Sea. With the engine, we're not at the mercy of nature. Oh. Ah. Oh. St. Elmo's fire. St. Elmo's fire. Isn't it unusual for it to appear so brightly? It's almost like midday. <laughs> we should feel honored. Maybe the god of death is welcoming us. King Eric commanded that no one should enter the sacred land. And if anyone dared disobey, he would be killed by Odin's thunderbolt. Professor Gould asked us to check out these three points. Here, look. The first one is on the tundra. An avalanche! Astro! Yes, sir! Oh, oh. Get out of here. Captain Cloud, what's that doing locked up in here? <gasps> Forget what you saw. It's nothing to you and never come in this cabin again. It is said that the Vikings often landed here on the tundra. It had good access to the sea. The area below this cliff is the first point. Astro, go take a look. Right. 
Please be careful, Astro. I will. Norwegian written on a stone plate? Yes, sir. What did it say? The gold is north of here. Only Gunnar can find it. All others turned back. Gunnar, do you know what it means? North, that doesn't tell us much. We'll go on to the next spot. like the remains of the Nazi base. This is the second spot. Sir, there's another stone plate. Don't get too close if you don't have to. Can you read it with your telescopic vision? Yes, sir. It's in ancient Norwegian again. This time it says, the gold is west. Only Gunnar can find it. All others turn back. Gunnar. The gold is at a point southwest up the river. Only Gunnar can find it. But there is no river. He's right. I checked the whole area from above, and I couldn't see a river either. Maybe there was when the tablets were carved, and now it's frozen over. Do you have an ancient map? Yes, Doctor. Here it is. Yes, this is it, the River Isri. River Isri? But how do we find it without coordinates? A little ancient pathfinding. From the first point, we go north. From the second, we draw a line west. And where the two points intersect, that's where you'll find Odin. Dr. Elephant, there was something I missed. There's something here about Gunnar. Gunnar? Gunnar was the descendant of the god Odin, the protector of the gold, the chosen one. What's that? Sabi! Zamora, this time we fight to the finish. To the finish. I don't need you anymore. Go to your father. Go! Oh, Papa! Sabi! You didn't need to steal my son. I would have fought you just out of hate. I've spent my life in the civilized world. It's taught me never to trust anyone. He's back now. Back for more cloud after all I have done to you. Oh. This is your chance to quit. <laughs> I'd rather die than run from you. Papa must win, but if he doesn't, I'll fight cloud myself. Stop this killing! Stop it! Out of the way, Astro! Who is that? You stay out of the way. This isn't just a killing. It is an ancient duel. We are the true descendants of the Vikings. We've followed the commands of King Eric. No one can take away our rights. 
Zamora claims to be king. He lies. The title is mine. There's only one way to settle this. We fight. Today's the end. There can be only one king chosen of Odin. Yes, they have to fight to let king. Odin decide which is his chosen. Now you get out of the way. <clears throat> Don't look at me like that. You don't understand. It was the will of Odin. That's no excuse for killing a man. Quiet. You come from a different land. The law of Odin is no excuse. It's our way of life. Cloud, you've won. You've won the right to be called Gunnar. Zamora, you fought well, like a true warrior. Sabi, you should be proud to have such a fine father. <gasps> Sabi, grow to be strong and... Gunnar, so it's a title. He's the king chosen by Odin. Odin! I am the new Gunnar. Will you follow me, men? I'm going to Odin's sacred land in the north. Who will come with me? I need one man. I'll go. Sabi, you can't. You're only a boy. I offered to go first, and by law, you have to take me. All right, then. It's done. Odin! 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 At last, as Gunnar, I alone can go to the sacred land. According to the map, there should be a sulfur spring not far from here. What's a sulfur spring? That was close. That is a sulfur spring. They're pretty common in volcanic areas like this. The water is very hot and sometimes the ground around it can be unstable, so be careful. No matter how far we go, we can still see the aurora. I've never seen anything like this. It's almost like it's calling us. I've seen lots of auroras, but this one's different somehow. Astro! Astro, are you all right? Answer me! Hey, say something, Astro! Savi, Savi, hang on tight. Wait for me. Hold on till I reach you. Grab my leg. Come on, catch my leg! I... I don't want your help. Oh. Safe. Beautiful. It's so bright, almost blinding. Come on, let's go. I can feel it. The sacred spot isn't far. Let's take the easiest way around the foot of that mountain. Huh? A keel of a ship. A lot of scientists will love this. Proof that the Vikings came this far. So, is this it? Is this King Eric's ship? Well, 
No, it's too small. King Eric's ship would be twice this big. It's further on. <gasps> this is it. This is the sacred spot. We have found King Eric's ship. Fire. We shouldn't go any further. It's a sacred place, not a place for the living. We're not wanted here. I say we go back before we disturb something. No, not after coming all this way. No, Cloud, let me go first. Astro. I'm a robot. You don't have to worry about me defiling the sacred ground. All right, go ahead, but don't touch anything. Whatever you do, don't touch that gold. What? What are you saying? Warning him like that. Don't you trust Astro? I'm suspicious, I guess. Just forget it. Ah! Astro! Astro! Ah! No! Stay back. I'll go alone from here. You can't. Remember, only Gunnar can find it. Astro? Astro! Where are you, Astro? Oh, Astro. What is that? Is this the gold that King Eric brought here? I am Odin, an explorer unit. An explorer unit? I was sent from Xenon 1,000 years ago. My landing on Earth damaged my motor mechanisms. I couldn't move. Some Earth inhabitants found me, but they had not yet developed the technology to repair me. So they worshipped me as a god. The god Odin was a wrecked spaceship? Now, at last, I can leave Earth. This robot will provide the parts I need to repair myself. I will begin disassembly. <laughs> the sacred figure of the Vikings. <laughs> the goal, the sacred land, a fraud. <laughs> All of it a machine from outer space. How fitting. <laughs> Listen to me, great god Odin. Let me take you out of this deep freeze. The best engineers on Earth will repair you. No, I don't want humans to touch me. They're all fools. Why else would they worship me as a god? No, I will do it myself. Well, whatever you say. I've waited 1,000 years for this. No, what are you doing? Give that robot back to me. Huh? Dr. Elephant, here, take Astro. Astro, Astro, it's a short circuit. Beautiful. <laughs> now you will see my fury. Huh? Just a little more. Sabi, you can finish me now. Captain Cloud, huh? Let's take cover. Savi, go. Forget about me. Dr. Elephant, go hide quickly. Just about got it. That should do it. Watch out! What is that thing? That's what was behind Odin and the gold. Really? Cloud risked his life for mine. That monster is not going to get away with this. Just remember, Astro, it's very powerful. Hang on, Cloud. We'll get you out of here. Look, Astro's coming back. One thousand years. Dr. Elephant, the monster is finished! Well done, Astro. Astro, you're a brave Viking.
My father and Captain Cloud died bravely. On their graves, I vow to be a fearless Viking like they were. Captain Cloud. Proud Viking, sound the gong and set sail. terrorized large parts of Asia. There are only a handful of scientists in the world who could design such a sophisticated machine. <laughs> I can narrow it down further than that, Dr. Winston. I know who made it. It was the director of the International Ministry of Science, Dr. Elephan. Elephan? What are you going to do? Confront him? That's exactly right, Dr. Winston. You might need help. Why don't you take my assistant with you? A robot? Dr. Winston, you know how I feel about robots. I have no use for them. Using robots to help me goes against everything I believe in. I think you're just being stubborn, Holmes. Robots can be very useful. I'd rather die than ask a robot for help. Oh, except for one particular task, which I think even your assistant could handle. What's that, Holmes? 
Well, as you can see, my office could use a little tidying up. Why don't you ask him to do something about it while I'm gone? How dare you? My assistant is not a janitor. But it's the perfect job for him. He won't have to think. <laughs> oh, well, I can't really blame him. I think his experience has made him bitter towards robots. Those cars have been out front for over an hour now. It's as if they're watching me. Who on earth are they? If it bothers you, I'll find out who they are. Yes. Oh, wait a minute, Astro. Seems someone else is coming. Huh? Looks like we have a guest. I'm a detective, Doctor. I am Inspector Randolph Holmes. I think I came just in time to scare some prying eyes from your doorstep. They left in a hurry. Let me tell you why I've come. I want you to tell me everything about the design and construction of the solar sphere. Don't be modest, Doctor. I know all about your involvement with the project. Without you, there would have been no solar sphere and no deaths because of it. Inspector Holmes, you'd better watch what you say. Shut up, robot. This is none of your business. It is. Stop arguing, Astro. Huh? Very well, Inspector Holmes. You win. You're quite right. I did design and build the solar sphere, but it was a very long time ago, 20 years. At the time, the government was starting to develop the planet Pluto. It was a very ambitious project and very costly because Pluto is a very cold planet and to develop it, we had to come up with an artificial heat source strong enough for the entire planet. So I managed to produce sufficient heat and light from plutonium energy and I adapted it to the man-made solar sphere. It took three and a half years to complete the sphere. It worked beautifully. But then all of a sudden, the government canceled the whole program. Why did they cancel it after all the work you put in? A financial problem. We learned we needed five times as much money as we had expected. And it wasn't long, of course. <sighs> Before they forgot all about the solar sphere. Until one day they discovered the sphere had been stolen. Isn't that right, Doctor? Yes, that's right, Inspector. And I have no idea who stole it. Leave that to me, Doctor. I've got a few clues already. Dr. Elephant, I need to ask you a favor. Would you mind lending me your clothes? Huh? My clothes? You're their target, so for your safety, I'll disguise myself as you. But... Hurry up, Dr. Elephant. Leave him alone. Get your hands off him. Get out of my way, robot. Huh? huh? It never occurred to me that you were a robot. Don't even dream such a thing. This is an artificial arm. I'm as human as you are. Artificial? That's right. I once served in the Queen's Intelligence Service. One night, I learned that another agent was being held captive in a warehouse. I broke in to rescue him. It turned out the place was wired to explode. When the dynamite went off, I was seriously injured. My own doctor was away from London at the time. And those idiots at the agency didn't know any better than to take me to a robot hospital. They might as well have slit my throat. You know what those robots did? They treated me as if I were made of nuts and bolts instead of human flesh. They cut my body to ribbons and then put me back together again like a robot. You mean your body is... The proud blood of my family survives only here, in my head. If I understand you correctly, except for your head, you function as a robot. That's right, Dr. Elephant, but I am human. Holmes tradition, famous in my country for generations, still runs in my brain. Now, Dr. Elephant, please lend me a suit of your clothes. You, robot, you're going to pretend you're me and take Dr. Elephant away to a safe place. What? No argument, robot. Don't think. Just do as I tell you. So, he's left. Next. 
Next is the body. I'm coming. Who is it at this unearthly hour? Huh? Don't make a sound, Dr. Elephant, and everything will be all right. Come along with us, Doctor. Phew, I think it's probably safe now. Look! Look up ahead! Huh? It couldn't be! Turn on the car radio, Astro. Let's listen to the news. Yes, sir. Repeating, an unidentified shining sphere has appeared over the central part of the city, and residents of that area are panic-stricken. What'll we do? I'm all right, Astro. The drivers all abandoned their cars. Astro, we have to get out of here as quickly as possible. The fuel cells have ignited. Come on, Astro, let's run into that tunnel. If you go further down the tunnel, you'll be safe. Hey, where are you going, Astro? I'm going to destroy the spear before it does any more damage. What? No, not even you can do that. Astro! Don't do something quickly. The whole city will be in ruins. Sir. How do you like the way I've revived your masterpiece, Dr. Elephant? Hmm. I want to know why you have brought me here. It was you who made the solar sphere. Now I want you to make a stronger one. No, I won't. I have the best of intentions. First, I will use it to conquer the Earth. Then, on to the other planets. Oh, you're a madman. The sphere's antenna brought back this robot. Oh, it's Astro. I guess his nuclear motor broke down. Astro can't seem to move another inch. <laughs> it's your choice now, Doctor. Either you help me or Astro stays like this. All right. I suppose I must. <laughs> That's the spirit. We're partners now, Dr. Elephant. I'll have a room prepared for you right away. Cheer up. Soon we'll have the galaxy in the palms of our hands. <laughs> have a good rest, Doctor. Elephant isn't a man to give up easily. You can be sure he'll try something sooner or later. Watch him every minute. Yes, sir. Dr. Elephant, I mean Inspector Holmes. If you could replace my arms and legs, I might be able to help you. I can't move at all now. I wouldn't be as strong, but I could do a little. Shut up, robot. I certainly don't need your help. This must be the control panel. How do I play it? I am in charge of the control panel. Huh? Well, this robot sounds very obedient. Listen, I'm Dr. Elephant. I created this solar sphere. I know, sir. Oh, 
Very well. Will you do as I tell you then? I. All right, good. I command you, robot. Fly the solar sphere into outer space immediately. Aye, aye, sir. I did it. It's moving. Dr. Elephant, what's going on? Boss, Dr. Elephant tried to steal the sphere. What? Explain yourself, Doctor. Go on. You're through, Larson. I will destroy the sphere before I will allow you to use it to conquer the Earth. What? You're not, Elephant. You're finally catching on, Larson. I'm a detective sent by my government to stop your evil scheme. Never. Get him! After him! Excuse me. Do me a favor, will you? I. Let me change my arms and legs with yours. You give me your arms and legs, and I'll give you... Mine. I. Thank you very much. Hurry, it's very important. Go get him, men! Oh, legs feel like lead. A bullet hit the leg control circuit. My legs are useless now. He must be around here. Go get him! I'll show you what we do to spies around here, Holmes. You're Astro. Robot pilot! Robot pilot! Get the sphere down into the crater! I cannot move now. Stupid robot! He gave his arms and legs to Astro! Ugh. Good for nothing, robot! Leave me alone! Let go of me, Astro! I don't need your help! Well, look at that! Huh? What? I didn't fool that robot pilot. He must have known I wasn't Dr. Elephant all along. No, he didn't! That robot can't move at all now. What? He gave me his arms and legs, I gave him mine. How could you do that? My whole plan depended on him controlling the sphere. You've ruined it. Who's going to control the sphere now? Wait, don't worry about that. My computer's memorized the whole melody. Shut up, don't tell me what to do. Let me go. Oh. Oh. <sighs> Sorry, Inspector. You good for nothing, robot. I'll stay here till nightfall, then sneak in and destroy the panel. Now, I've got to get into that control room. <sighs> Mr. Holmes, let me carry you. Shut up. I'd rather be caught and killed by Larson's men than ask you for help. Oh. Inspector! I can't get up. Hold on to me. Put me down. I can't fly, I'm not at full energy, but I learned a long time ago it takes more than physical strength to conquer evil. 
Let me go! Astro, give me a few measures of the melody. That's all I need. Huh? Well, you see, when I was a little boy, I learned to play the piano. I think I can manage to play the melody. Okay, Mr. Holmes. time, but I'll do my best. the melody's working. Look, the solar sphere is leaving the Earth's atmosphere. You <laughs> did it, Mr. Holmes! <laughs> and you'll pay for it with your life, Holmes. Larson! Ah! Ah! Mr. Holmes! Mr. Holmes! Mr. Holmes! Oh, no! He was shot in the head. His head was the only thing left that made him human. You shot him in the head. You've killed what was human in him. Murderer! Stay away from me. You'll pay for this. Uh, don't touch me! I'm sorry I was so unkind in refusing your help, Dr. Winston. That's all right. I can't hate robots. With my new head, I'm a robot from top to bottom. Mr. Holmes. It's true. I am a robot now, and proud of it. I wouldn't be alive now if it weren't for them. I've learned that some robots are superior to humans. Did Astro teach you that? The blood of the Holmes tradition. Listen to me, Holmes. Tradition isn't blood, it's pride. Each individual has to find it in himself. Thank you, Dr. Winston. Please remember me to Astro. The whole world should be proud of him.
Orbit correction, 0 0.029. Power save, checked. Orbit correction, over. Power save, 0 0.00001, checked. Destruction index, 0 0.03. Energy circuit, checked. Resistance, minus 0.009%. The anti-proton gun, ready. Hello scientists, welcome to my lab. I think you'll find this demonstration interesting. I've spent more than 10 years developing the anti-proton gun. At last it's complete. And today you will be the first to witness it. It may come as a surprise when I tell you the anti-proton gun is the most powerful weapon in the world. Now, don't let that alarm you. We've never needed a weapon as much as this one. With our expanding exploration of space, the anti-proton gun will be invaluable in our development and study of the planets. Your approval is crucial. Since this is only a demonstration, I'll use only 20% of its power. Five seconds to go. Four. Three, two, one, fire! <gasps> A perfect hit, exactly as planned. <gasps> It's beginning to crack! Astro, the fault lines are spreading. The moon could break apart. We can't let the cracks reach the other side of the moon. We must stop them. In time, Astro. You've done it again. Now, Captain Perot, I am lodging a formal protest against your experiment. Do you realize what could have happened? But our research showed the moon's surface could absorb such a blast. The gun may be more powerful than I imagined. If you can't control the gun, stop experimenting with it. You can't write off the whole project because of one incident! The uses for this gun are limitless. You can use it to develop natural resources on other planets. It can help stop asteroids from colliding with the Earth. Also, with this gun, you can turn uninhabited planets into laboratories. You know perfectly well what would happen if this gun fell into the wrong hands. That's right. One wrong move and it could destroy our planet. Yes, absolutely. We must give it more thought. You all know progress demands that risks be taken. With such a dangerous weapon, we have to avoid taking risks. We'll discuss it further at the UN. Oh, you're all oh, cowards! Oh, Good oh, for nothing! Oh, 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 scientists! Get out of my sight! Temperamental genius. The Secretary General of the United Nations has announced today that a decision has been reached to prohibit the use of the anti-proton gun until more safeguards can be implemented in the use of the weapon. Phew, I'm relieved to hear that. Oh? Professor Elephant, I need your help. It's extremely urgent. Hello, Mr. Secretary-General. What can I do for you? Captain Perot is on his way to Jupiter with the anti-proton gun. Uh, what's that? <laughs> I'll show these scientists it takes action, not theories, to get results. Jupiter's moons contain enough rare metals to show them all what my anti-proton gun can do. Energy output 100%. Destination, the fourth moon of Jupiter, Amaltia.
Volpogis, <laughs> you're still alive? Atlas, it's good to see you again. You've turned yourself into quite a robot. You were no more than waist high when I built you. I'm very proud of you, Atlas. You improved your body structure by yourself. With a little help from my Omega Factor. Don't expect any thanks, Jis. You tried to destroy me. True, but you also tried to kill me. But let's forget about the past. Listen to me, Atlas. I suppose you heard of Captain Perot's anti-proton gun. It's a marvelous weapon. I've just learned that Perot is on his way to Jupiter with the gun. What's that to me? What if you were to catch up with him and take the gun? It would make you and me absolutely invincible. Forget it. That doesn't interest me. Atlas, by the way, I hear that you're spending time with a lovely female robot. You mean Livian? Livian? Wasn't she one of my robot servants? Watch your tongue. <laughs> Livian is not the same as she was, just as I am not the same. We belong to each other. She's not your servant anymore. Okay, anything you say, just put the sword away. Huh. Well, I remember that Livian always was fond of you. <laughs> Be warned, Jis. If you do any harm to Livian, I swear I'll kill you. No, no, never. Why should I? I mean... Give me your transmitter, Jis, the one in your cloak. What for? Give it to me. <laughs> okay, you win. Just calm down. <laughs> Here you are. All right, I'll spare your life this time. <laughs> what? Me? To Jupiter? We have to stop Captain Perot from getting to Jupiter, and we need your help. You have to go, Astro. He's already more than halfway there. Only you can catch up with him. His ship is very fast. I see, Dr. Elephant. I'll go now. When you need my help, use this ring. I'll come and help you wherever I am. Understand, Livian? You still don't realize I'm always one step ahead of you, Atlas. You slip that ring on her finger and she's mine. done with Livian. <laughs> Livian's all right. Livian, look, she's my hostage, Atlas. What are you going to do with her? Tell me. Wait, don't move, Atlas. Stay where you are or you'll never see Livian again. If you don't 
want to lose her, listen to me and do as I say. One way or another, I want that anti-proton gun, and you're going to get it back for me. Go to Jupiter and bring me back the gun. Then I'll let you have Livian. I'll make you pay for this. Never mind the threats, just answer yes or no. All right, you're in control now, Jis. I'll get you the gun, but just remember one thing. I'll be watching you every minute. How are you going to do that? It takes a long time to get from the Earth to Jupiter. My crystal castle has a Takayan receiver. Takayan? That travels faster than light. You have that? I warn you, Jis, if you so much as touch her, I'll kill you. Estimated you, Atlas. You have some surprises of your own. <laughs> I'll get the anti-proton gun, and then this... Oops, I mustn't forget. Atlas can hear me. I've just passed Mars, but I haven't caught up with Perot's spaceship. The first energy tank jettisoned. I've caught up with Perot's ship! Do you hear me, Volpulgis? As you can see, I am approaching Jupiter. Look through the television camera in my eyes and witness how I take the proton gun. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you, Atlas. I'm watching you, too. But don't forget, I've got Livian's life here in my hand. Livian? 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 Yes, my master? That costume becomes you, Livian. Go fetch me some whiskey. I will. Volpulgis, how dare you? No need to worry, Atlas. I'll do her no harm if you get me the anti-proton gun. I'm just enjoying myself like in the good old days. I'll never forget this. Never is a long time. Captain Perot, the target, Amaltia, distance 2.2 space miles, ready. The moon, Amaltia, 150 kilometers in diameter. Anti-proton gun, take aim! Anti-proton gun, take aim. Ready, sir. Power, 100%. The target, Amaltia. Power up. the anti-proton gun, Astro. I'm taking it back to Earth. No, I can't let you do that. Then I'll take it by force. What's happening? This will be a fight to the finish. 
to teach you not to get in my way. Come on, Astro! Where are you? Come on! A pretty good fight between two brothers, wouldn't you say? They're brothers? Yes, I got Skunk to steal Astro's design. And from them I built Atlas. So in effect, Atlas and Astro are brothers. The one difference is... I put the Omega Factor in Atlas's brain. Omega Factor? That makes Atlas much more sophisticated than a normal robot. He's got a mind similar to humans. In fact, his is much more complex and intelligent. Then why is he always trying to harm people instead of understanding them? Because his mind is superior. In fact, to Atlas, humans are as simple as animals. <laughs> oh. It's not my fault. I can't stop my test. You shall die, both of you. Atlas, stop fighting. Astro's your brother. Uh -huh. You two were created from the same design. What? We're wasting time, Atlas. Three, two, one, fire! <laughs> My nose is getting better, too. <laughs> Astro, my brother, I didn't know.
just for you and me. Sing of joy, sing about a boy, he's a hero, Astro Boy. Come and join us in our fantasy, we can all be heroes, you and me. Sing of joy, sing about a boy, he's a hero, Astro Boy. unless we have special permission. Ah! Hey, you, watch where you're flying. Huh? There's a piece of paper in it. I wonder, who put that in the sea? A whole pile of them. A letter. Please rescue us. My father is being worked to death from Lily, southern island of Pelagro. I can't find an island by that name. But I did find the letter. Maybe it's just a practical joke. That's gotta be it. Yes, humans like to play jokes, unlike us robots. feeling deep down that there is such an island. I've got a full energy supply. I can be back by dawn. Yes, I'll go. Please come. I'll travel with the current. Here goes. So low, and 
the Southern Cross can be seen from that side. I must be near the equator. My energy's already half gone. Well, I did come 3,000 miles. Lights must be over there. Excuse me, can you tell me where I am? <gasps> Who are you? Oh, don't be afraid. I'm just looking for Pelagro Island. Oh, Pelagro Island. You mean you know it? Oh. Pelagro is a huge sea serpent with eyes of fire and teeth like blades. A sea serpent? No one has ever faced him and survived. He's a terrible monster. The man who could capture or kill him would be the hero of the island. He'd be my hero, too. Then that thing chasing me must have been the serpent. What? You saw Pelagro around here? Oh! Those bright lights must have been the serpent, and Pelagro Island is where it lives. I haven't got much energy left. Better come back tomorrow. I'm getting weaker. Oh, just barely made it. Astro, time to get up. Huh? Your head. What have you been doing? Now you tell me what you have been up to. I can't. I won't tell your father. Th um. Now, if you sleep in class just because it's hot, robots will laugh at you. Mm. 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 Astro. Astro. <laughs> So, the robot is sleeping, huh? Astro! Is Astro asleep? Yes, dear. What did he use up all his energy for? He fell asleep in class. Maybe they're overworking him at school. I wonder... Foggy tonight. I better increase my hearing. I hope I'll be able to pick up something useful. Hey, what's that? Oh, a kid! Help him! Where am I? Is this the inside of the serpent? We were swallowed up, too. We're trapped in this place. We can't get out. Quiet now. I'm sorry to tell you, but as far as the outside world is concerned, you've been erased from the face of the Earth. You'll have to work for us now. Anyone trying to escape will be shot on sight. No, I've got kids at home. We want to go home! Work. Just work. Don't ask questions. If you work hard, there may be a chance to return home. After you die, that is. Thank you, young man. You saved my life. Are they Ooh. making you work here, too? You look too weak. Shh. Come here, and I'll explain. I was captured while traveling with my wife and daughter, a baby girl, 20 years ago. 20 years ago? They're mining for iron here. At first, they used robots, but the salt from the ocean made everything rust. Nothing worked. 
So now they use human beings to work the mines. Most people die after five years. My wife, too, suffered and died. Well, now. What are you doing? My daughter works in the clinic, so every once in a while I bump myself on the head and get sent there so I can see her. What? Oh. I'll introduce you to her. Father's back again. Not again. Dad? Oh, don't you worry, Lily. There's a boy here who wants to meet you. Saved my life, this boy. Lily, so it was you who sent the letters in the bottles. So you found them. What do you think brought me way out here? Oh, thank goodness. Quiet now, Lily. But what can you do? What can anyone do? Yes, I'm afraid only a miracle can get us out of this place. I know a way out of here. Huh? Do you really? Yes, it'll work. I promise. Can you breathe okay? Yes, I'm all right. Stop! No boots allowed in the clinic. Oh, help! Someone! It's a robot! Send the sea serpent. Yes, sir! Forgotten what it's like? Oh, stars! Oh. The sea serpent is harmless now. It was only a searchlight. You don't have to worry because nobody's going to hurt you anymore. Well, how about that? We're lucky to be alive. Thank you, son. Smell the air. It's so fragrant. A real one. That's right. Everything's real here. Oh. So this is a palm tree. And this must be a flower. Sir, I suppose you've guessed that I'm a robot. What's that? When you return to your homeland, please tell everyone about that undersea base. I sure will. And you can help me tell them. I can't. I came here without official permission. So you broke the robot laws to help us. That boy is back. Now with an old man. Queen, not let strangers on island. Huh? There's a girl here, too. Oh. Huh? Thank you. I, uh, oh. I see, I see. Lily's shy. She just wanted to thank you for helping us. <laughs> well, uh, uh, Lily, uh, I'm actually... 
Palgrove. Were you the one who killed Palagro? Yes. Our hero and savior. What? Hero, 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 hero. Now, finally, we can live in peace. And we want to show our appreciation. Oh. Stay here. Oh. Oh. I'll be your servant. Oh. Hero, what's wrong? It's time for me to go home. But I've got a favor to ask. I shall do anything you say. I want you to take care of these two. All right, come with me. to tell me. I'm sorry, just around nowhere. I see. I know you're up to something. From now on, I'm keeping my eye on you every night. Astro, your father and I are worried about you. We're afraid you'll get hurt. Huh? What the? He's gone again, that boy. Dad, Mom, I'm sorry. This will be the last time. I won't forgive him this time. Oh, what's wrong? Go back to bed. Can't obey his parents, can he? Going out every night. Oh, dear, there must be something that's bothering him, that's all. Oh, how can you be so cool about it? We're responsible for discipline. I know. Don't shout in the middle of the night. But what do you know, Urania? He's going to Pelagro Island. Don't be silly. He knows he can't go abroad without a permit. Oh, robots want to be free to go places too, you know. You don't realize how serious this is, Urania. Robots that leave the country without necessary papers will... Have their energy terminated and will be executed. It's a capital crime. Oh. Father, I think he's a wonderful boy. I would like to be his friend forever. Yes, I feel the same way. Anybody home? Hero, where were you? We were worried. Are my two friends all right? Yes, we're fine. Good, let's make plans for leaving the island. We'll borrow a boat and get out as far as we can to where steamers go. No, you mustn't. You must stay. You're my hero. But I've got to take Lily back to where she belongs. And I've got to return to my own country. I'll go there with you. I've got to stay with you. I've got to. OK, let's get ready. I don't even know your name, young fellow. My name is Astro. Those two are the problem. Seize the old man and the girl, now. Stay where you are! Go on, get them! Stop it! Run for it! Astro! 
we going to get a boat? Hmm. It's the Queen. I'm giving up. Go back to your homes. Here's a boat for those two. Really? Thank you. Astro, this will take us home. I'll push the boat out for you. Look out behind you. Oh. Oh. Don't tell Lily I'm a robot. Where are you going? Oh, good, you've come to. That boy, Astro, where is he? Astro, he was... he was killed by the Queen. No! Oh, that poor boy. So kind and so strong. Yes, that's Astro. He's the one in my class. Now, go on with your story. Well, after I settled the matter of the undersea base, I wanted to let my daughter see the school he went to. She wanted to have some way of paying her respects. We've been looking for this school for a long time. It might not be wise to mention Astro's role in finding you. Of course, the robot law. Besides, my daughter thinks Astro's dead, and Astro doesn't want her to know he's a robot. I think the best way is just to come and go very quietly. Hey, look, there's a cute girl out there. Oh, wow. I wonder who she is. Huh? Astro, you sounded like you knew her. Well, uh, who, me? Well, then, I guess I'll have to leave without seeing him. I think that would be best for him, too. Oh. Lily? Father, is this where Astro went to school? Yes, and we must never forget what he did for us. Lily, goodbye. You and me, sing of joy. 